All right, welcome to another 8-bit computer video. So a couple weeks ago, I posted a video showing a design and implementation of an FPGA-based VGA text display. So in this video, I am going to put it together as a card for the 6809 system I've been developing. This should be a fairly quick video. I'll show you the schematic, which mostly just adds some glue logic so that the 6809 system can talk to the FPGA. I'll show the constructed module. It's just going to be point-to-point -point wiring on a protoboard. I'll test it to make sure it works, and then I'll wrap up and talk about what is next. And I think we are very close to the end of this 8-bit computer project, so um, I'll you know talk about what I'm going to do to wrap things up. Uh, all right, so let's look at the schematic. All right, so here's the schematic. This component here is the FPGA module, which is an Arduino 3, so that has the latest Ultra Plus 5K FPGA on it. So it produces the actual VGA signals, the horizontal vertical sync, and then red, green, blue, and intensity bits for each pixel. So we get essentially 16 colors, much like the original IBM, you know, CGA, EGA, VGA text colors. Those are run through a simple resistor DAC and then output on a connector, which will then go to the VGA monitor. The FPGA is a 3.3 volt device and the 6809 system uses five volt logic. So there are three 74LVC245 bus transceiver chips that are used to do the level conversion between the host five volt part of the circuit and the FPGA 3.3 volt part of the circuit. Two of the bus transceivers only propagate signals in one direction from the host side of the circuit to the FPGA. So these are for the, uh, the address lines and then also the read and write strobes and also the reset signal. The other bus transceiver is actually bi-directional because it's the one that connects the data bus of the host system to the data bus pins of the FPGA. So signals can propagate in both directions. The direction is controlled by the read strobe. So when the read strobe is asserted, it tells this bus transceiver to propagate signals from the FPGA back to the host system. And if it's not asserted, then the signals propagate in the other direction from the host system to the FPGA. We use a 74HCT574 8-bit register as the VRAM bank register. So the issue here is that there's only two kilobytes of address space in the host memory map to map the VRAM frame buffer in. And so the host will write a value to this register and then the low two bits of the register contents generate the high two bits of the VRAM address. So that allows the host system to read and write to one of the four 2K banks of video memory. We use one of the host system's dedicated IO device uh, enable signals as the chip select for the bank register. So no specific address decoding is necessary to determine when the bank register is being written to. In contrast, the board will do its own address decoding for the video memory, and there is a particular two kilobyte part of the address space that the video memory is mapped into. So we use a 74HCT688 chip, and this is basically just an 8-bit equality comparator. So we check the high five bits of the address generated by the host system against a particular pattern of values that is the one that we want the VRAM to be active for. And that chip will then produce a chip select that is asserted when the read or write from the host system falls into that two kilobyte window where the video memory is mapped. Finally, we have a 74HCT32 quad two input OR gate chip and this is simply used to combine the chip selects for the bank register and the VRAM with the memory read and memory write signals generated by the host system. And this will then generate a valid write strobe for the bank register and valid read and write strobes for the, the video memory that then propagate to respectively the bank register and the FPGA implementing the display. And of course, we have our oscillator chip that provides the 25.175 megahertz VGA dot clock that drives the internal logic in the FPGA. 
All right, so here is the board all wired up. I used this IC pattern proto board. I've used this uh, a few times before. It's got groups of uh, five pads that are all connected, kind of like a breadboard. And I did most of the wiring on the front using this wire I got on AliExpress uh, a while ago. It's kind of like wire wrap wire, but it's a little thicker and it, it's really nice for this kind of application. You can see the it, the wire stays pretty flush to the to the surface of the board doesn't like stick up too much. So anyway, I've verified that all of the continuity is correct. I just need to actually put ICs in it and test it. So yeah, let's try that. All right, I've got all the chips installed. I've got the Arduino 3 programmed. I think this is ready to test. All right, I think we're ready for our test. So I have the VGA card hooked up to the 6809 system. I did discover one problem with it, which is that I had accidentally reversed the horizontal and vertical sync signals, so that is fixed. Um, all right, so our plan here is I'm gonna turn it on and then I'm going to load the test program that we used when I developed the GAL-based uh, VGA text display. All right, so let's power up. All right, so now let's... Um, load the test program. So I've got it um, copied into the uh, buffer. All right, so program is uploading. Okay, and let's set the address to 1000 hex and then execute and we should see the test output on the display. As you can see, the cursor is blinking. So that already shows that uh, there are signs of life. And indeed, test program works. So this does appear to be uh, functionally equivalent to the uh, GAL-based uh, VGA display. So this is amazing. It works. Um, I'm very pleased. All right, so we finally have a working VGA text display. So this is amazing. It was a really long time coming. I'm very happy that this finally works. So what is going to happen next? My main idea is that I would like the 6809 system to be quote unquote, a real computer in the sense that when it's turned on, I would like it to be able to do something semi useful. So a couple things I'm thinking about are one, I'd really like to have full software support for both the keyboard and the display. So when you turn it on, those become the primary IO devices uh, that the user interacts with. And I wonder if we could get Microsoft Basic working on this thing. That would certainly qualify it as a quote unquote real computer, I think. And I think at that point, if we get that stuff working, then I think we've really allowed the 6809 system to do everything I wanted it to do originally. And I have some ideas of other projects to, to work on, but we'll talk about that in the next video. As always, a link to the schematics and other resources is in the video description. So thanks a lot for watching and I will see you soon.